Jameson, aka Gator Guy 231 across the DFS industry, here for a Friday showdown edition of Borussia Gladenbach versus Freiburg. Uh, these Bundesliga showdowns keep uh, really surprising and uh, you know, kind of treating us soccer truthers to uh, you know nice things, which we don't always get. We have a uh, 50k in the lobby at 40k yesterday filled before lineups even came out which that's insane like normally people don't really like want to pump in you know entries and volume until they at least see who's playing but uh you know it's a good sign for uh you know our niche little segment of dfs over here that um hopefully as this soccer keeps coming fast and furious uh the prize pools can keep up um those of us that have grinded for a long time um we can still keep doing very well um, with, you know, more, I'll say sharper construction. Um, I'm going to vent at the end of this. So I'm going to get into the picks first because I have no idea how long I'm going to vent. Um, I don't even know if I want to call it venting. I, I just want to talk about yesterday. So I think there was like so much good things to talk about in terms of strategy, in terms of like overall roster building, you know, just ownership of guys that, you know, kind of was surprised were even in consideration. So um, stick around afterwards and uh, I'll do that. Uh, before I jump into the picks, please, bottom right is the subscribe button. Uh, I know it's small. I'm going to work on that, but please subscribe. You guys have no idea how much it helps. Um, not only me doing all this soccer stuff for you guys, but uh, Chris doing a ton of esports. We've got some I believe NASCAR coming. I'm going to be recording PGA with TK at the beginning of next week. So this channel is going to have a ton of DFS stuff coming. We're going to be doing some betting in the future. Um, so make sure you subscribe. I promise you it's going to be some good stuff. Um, and the best part is free. So let's get into this game. Um, and then the part at the end that I'm going to excited about is I'm going to talk about yesterday. So um, Gladenbach minus 131 favorite at Freiburg. Again, we've been talking about for a while how much weight do you put into home teams. I don't think a ton. Um, pretend like they're at a neutral site for the most part. Um, but they're 316 at home, three total. So Gladenbach, like, you got to keep – I'm going to be talking about – but those sets, they're, they're a split. Like last time, last game, uh, Stendhal and Hoffman were a pretty even split. Um, Newhouse took before. Um, I'm blanking on his name. I'll have it in a minute. But the – there was the wing back that came in um, and started over Ben Sabani. Was that his name? Or am I getting the uh, other leagues confused? But over the left back, um, he took some sets. And then Bennis is who I'm going to talk about. If he ever starts, will probably be on set. Freiburg, a lot easier. Gunter and Grifo is pretty much a split based on sides. So let's get into construction. So the easiest, the single easiest play on the slate is my cover boy, Christian Gunter. Um, I think I should have checked beforehand on Rotorwire. Shout out if you want like the easiest way to get statistics for Bundesliga, for Superliga, for any of the leagues. You know, Rotorwire subscription, I have no idea how much it is. Um, actually works very, very well with an FSI subscription still, but you can get stats. Sorted, all that good stuff, a lot easier. But um, I think Guns are second in the league in crosses. Regardless, takes the majority of the sets. Very, very open, um, active in open play. Um, we saw last game, like, he um, was just absolutely shut down first half uh, by Leverkusen. Still finished with eight crosses, 11 DK. I feel like a lot of that was in the final, like, 15 minutes. But regardless – the value is there. You know, he gets you what we love about DK, um, the underpriced syndrome for, for defenders. Um, he definitely falls into that fit. So I think he can easily be your captain. Um, but I think if you're making like 50 builds, he's probably in 40 to 45. He just fits well a lot of the ways. I'm going to say for your other lock, Alessandro Playa. And now here's the, the crazy thing. Did I even say his name right? As Alessane. But – Here's the thing about Playa. So he is not like my type of player, right? He's, you know, more, he's a striker. He's not going to cross the ball a ton, but the shots floor. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about a lot um, at the end of this. But 10 goals, 10 assists. So in 26 games, he's been involved in 20 scoring opportunities, but 74 shots. So, you know, 
about three shots a game. And if we look down, that proves to be true. Four. This was like the surprise game where, I mean, I was locked on him versus Bremen, but no shots, four crosses. Again, just kind of weird. But they were playing like this weird, like two striker system with him and Thurham versus him being on his own. So maybe that's something to keep in mind. You know, if you see them in kind of a weird formation, maybe you downgrade them a little bit. But three, five, two, two, three, four. So that is a floor. You know, whether you want to, we, I know we all love crosses, but shots do count as part of the floor. Um, and players that, you know, know how to get shots off, like I, I don't want to com- compare a, a player to Ronaldo, but, you know, why, why do we always just lock in Ronaldo? Why is he 74% owned? Not only is he going to potentially have like the best goal scoring odds on the slate, but he shoots a ton. So that is a four. Um, that little rant over. Um, I think from there, like the Thurum versus Grifo will decide a lot, um, as will lineups. I'm going to um, – Thurum's just been on a, a, an awesome goal scoring tear. He has less of a floor than Playa, um, shoots a little bit less, even though he's in wide position, doesn't really cross. But, you know, again, they're – it's a three total. Um, and they are a favorite, so I think Thurman will be mighty popular. And, you know, I've, I've played around builds, and you can absolutely get to him. Grifo, I think, is the better floor play. Not only does he have half the, cross, uh, half the sets, but just active player outside, um, not only drawing fouls, a couple tackles, a couple shots. So I think that that is somebody from a cash build that you're going to see very popular. Herman, um, you know, he got the surprise start. I don't think he had started since, like, 2019. I think it was in December. He can take some sets. Um, I, I think at this point it's Hoffman. And, um, you know, Stendhal was in last time and took over him. So I think that it's those two. And, you know, if those aren't in, then maybe you start looking at samples to see if where Herman takes. But he used to be a taker for them. I think that, that that's gone. And he's a little bit juiced up at 9K. I'm lucky to get the assist last week. But okay, I guess. Um, Stendhal... Uh, if you want like three, four crosses, a couple shots, I think it's fine. He does play in that hole. So the hole position is the 10. It's a position behind the striker. Um, doesn't let you get out wide. So it's harder to do my DFS peripherals, but it's still at least an attacking position um, for the favorite. So I think he will um, have some popularity. Newhouse. So if you don't see Hoffman, you don't see um, Stendhal, you can give some set pieces to Newhouse. That happened two, three games ago. Uh, but still an active shooter. Uh, two, I think two or three straight games with the goal. Uh, nice young player, but he's central. So, you know, you really are going to be relying on a goal um, or an assist uh, if he doesn't have sets. So Jonas Hoffman, this is like kind of something I want to talk about. So I was – I ended up fading him in showdown last, last uh, time around. Um, just with Herman in, I thought there was a chance that he could split some sets. Already saw Stendhal, knew that there was a chance that there were two there. And I, I've kind of made the point on these recordings the last you know couple of weeks that you know there's like these defensive midfielders that don't have like a set monopoly that I just have to get out of the habit of playing. So I still played road last week, uh, yesterday, which I think was okay. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But Hoffman, like. He, he kind of is like starting to stand for everything I, I don't want to see out of a DFS player, like somebody that I'm going to avoid. So especially last game, he was sitting back in a defensive role. And we knew he was in a defensive role because we saw Stendhal, we saw um, Herman, and we saw Thurman, and we saw Playa. So, you know, most teams aren't going to commit more than four to an attack. So he was going to naturally come, kind of come back. Um, and at that point, you were just relying solely on corners. So he's going to have to get an assist on the corner, um, or he's just going to have to get a ton of them to get any value. Uh, or, you know, maybe he gets one shot a game and it's got to be a goal. So I thought that was a strong fade. I was really surprised to see him, anybody um, really on him in classic. Like, I get it, right? I'm not calling anybody that played him in classic an idiot. Um, you know, I, I, he was, they were like a minus 200 favorite end up scoring four goals. So I, I get, I'm fine playing a corner taker, but that's what you're playing as a corner taker. You're not playing like a DFS stud. Um, you're playing a corner and you're really just relying on a goal to result from one of those crosses. So I do think that like there's a strong line. I don't know if I made my point that well there, but 
you need to like weigh these set guys. Just don't like go sprinting right to sets when all the upside is set. So like Rudy, um, Road, Hoffman here. I'm trying to think of um, some other examples that we had like last week. Uh, I can't think of somebody else centrally, but like these central, like more defensive level midfielders that the only reason you're talking about them is sets. If it becomes a set split, um, you know, you really got to start weighing your options. If there's somebody in a similar range that has a lot more open value or maybe has better scoring upside, you really got to decide if you're going to do it. Showdown a little less than classic, but classic, especially when you have other options from other teams, you've really got to strongly weigh that. Hope that helps. So Ben Sabani, I was right earlier. Um, I think we still say he's on PKs, but he's a left back that doesn't cross, but has PKs, has goal upside, got an assist last week. I mean, he's a good player. Um, you know, I would almost argue that I may think I'd rather him than Hoffman, which that might be like a hot take, but you know, I, I want more upside. And I think that the floor is kind of similar. Um, Jan Summer, if you want a goalie, sure. Um, we saw yesterday trap similar range was the, if you take out the sub, um, but I think he was four pass score in the slate after the, after Silva, Kostic, and uh, I already forget, Friedel. Um, so we're now we're starting to get where like a lot of the, oh, there's Oscar Wint. So if he starts over Ben Savani, um, I'll have to look up samples a little bit more as we get closer. I think if Hoffman um, and Sindel are still in, I don't know if we can give Wint like, any sort of monopoly, but maybe he picks a corner or two. But at 6,200, favored attacking fullback, yeah, I'm about that, whether he doesn't have sets or not. Um, so depending on how much you like Freiburg, I think like the Holer, Salali types, even Schmid, they're probably more set for like GPP or just like last man in cash. Um, if it's last man in cash, I'd go Salali and Schmid over Holer, who's more central and more of like a striker. But all those are fine for GPP and trying to maybe like capitalize on upside. Um, not not necessarily chalk for cash. Laner, um, you know, attacking fullback for Vladenbach, fifty four hundred is just fine. Hasn't been great by any means of late, but fifty four hundred, you know, I'll take him over Schmid. I did skip over my boy Bennis. So if he's ever in, ever in, he's gonna make all of y'all and me a lot of money. Uh, I think from what I remember in my research, he's like preferred over everybody for their sets. Nice, talented central midfielder, but more so attacking than defensive. Um, a lot of times he'll jump into the 10. So Stendhal finally needs, needs a break. Um, if he's in 5,800. I mean, he was a lock for me. And uh, I really hope he's somebody that would uh, be a huge differentiator um, for us. A Schwalo, Sure, if you want to go goalie on a dog, always have upside. I feel like every time I've been saying that, though, the guy gets lit up. So just, just be careful. Kramer's defensive. Peterson, GPP, another attacker for Freiburg. I think we're getting down to the point that not really anybody is going to be much of a conversation. Um, I mean, if you want, like, a punt, Robin Cook, you could do worse. I think he's been playing a lot of, like, central midfield, but 3,200, like, what do you expect? Like, it's fine. So for your two locks, let's just review. So if you plug in Gunter, 7,200, um, massive cross floor with sets, and play a, you know, solid shot floor, solid scoring upside, solid playmaking upside with the assists, I think those are the two that you will see the heaviest in, in catch games, give you, you know, the mix of highest floor and high ceiling, and uh, two guys that are definitely going to be in my lap. So good luck. Uh, hope you all enjoy. And if you want to stick around for kind of a review of yesterday's slate, along with some like DFS strategy and theories slash rants slash whatever the hell you want to call it. I'm going to be jumping over there at the end of this. Um, I'll talk it out. Good luck guys. And if you're sticking around, um, enjoy. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to break down my, my cash line from yesterday. Try to maybe like make a couple points. I don't know how well it will go. We'll see. So um, cost, my, my core was Costage, uh, Friedel, and Road. And Kostic was the captain. I just said, like, there's no way that you're not playing him because you had the salary. So a lot of people commented to me, like, you know, you you, you made a big point of saying, like, fuck the goals on the preview and get, then you show up with Silva and cash. Well, here's the thing, like, where else were you going to go with the money? Like, you're not eating the cap to go do, like, a dog fullback that's going to have two, three crosses over a striker 
for a favorite that scores a, like that the team scores a ton of goals. He's been in decent form, has PKs, and you know that you're projecting for three, four shots. Like that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, you you want to be careful about like being too goal centered, but that's a slate specific strategy. Um, so on this slate, like you were going to have, after you got building, you were going to plug Kostic and plug Friedel. Those were the two free squares on the slate. I thought road made a ton of sense with the potential set chance. Now, again, like he burned me and like he's the type of player I want to get away from, but most of the time, but I thought he fit fine here. Um, and so then you were stuck in that, that Silva and Kamada range. Like everybody had one of those two. Um, because we did think there was going to be goals and where else were you going to spend the salary? You weren't going to eat four or five K. So I went Silva because I thought with the PKs and I just thought with the player and like the style, I thought he was a better player than Kamada. I was lucky. But if you look at my GPPs, I had Kamada everywhere. I had some Kamada captain. I had some Silva captain, had a lot of Costage captain. Um, and just for differentiation reasons. But so here's one, like where I kind of want to talk about the strategy. So let's say that like Rashika is in without Bittencourt, or let's do the other way around. Let's say Bittencourt is in without Rashika. Well, then those one of those two guys is immediately like 50 to 60 percent in cash because even with Friedel, they're going to jump on half the sets. Both of them have good open play value. Both of them have good open play floors, and you can project and give them a higher outcome or a higher medium outcome than you can Andre Silva. Who doesn't if it doesn't show up the goal here you still give him the shot on goal when i'm doing this but if he doesn't show up the goal here it's just with 5.52 points like rashika or bittencourt in a half without a goal or assist are going to show up with 5.5 or six points so that's where like the strategy has to come in and like you know watch enough or you know watch some of lee's stuff or listen to jordan and andrew on rotowire wire and you're going to hear us talk about floors and talk about like projections and Talk to us about, you know, maybe that guy's a little too goal dependent for the price. And that's what we mean. Um, again, like, especially in soccer, and I think what makes soccer, like, one of the, just such an awesome DFS sport is it's not like NBA where, you know, you have these, like, strict point per dollar type of things. Like, and you can throw it into an optimizer. And an optimizer, more often than not, is going to beat the guy doing carving by hand. Um, soccer is completely different. Everything is contextual. Um, you know, I, I think if you went long range with an optimizer, that's just projecting things. I think you're probably going to lose in soccer because, you know, let's say it's a, like a, a classic there, even here, Andre Silva at 9,200 versus Bittencourt at 9,600, especially when you have the salary. I would say that a decent amount of time Bittencourt is going to outscore Silva. Um, and if you take away Silva's goals, it's going to be like 90% of the time Bittencourt's going to outscore Silva. But we're not in that, that, that wasn't the situation here. We didn't have a $8,000 or $9,000 set taker to pivot off of Silva for, so you saw crazy ownership. Um, I hope that helps. Like, it, it makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, like, feel free, message me on Twitter, especially when it's, like, not a day. Um where there's a ton of soccer going on. I have no problem answering. I think it's a great debate. It's something I kind of want to do more of, but you know, I wasn't really planning too much to do it today. So I don't, don't have any structure behind it. I just have my ideas and kind of what I wanted to say. So I, I again, hope it helps. Hope it makes sense. Um, you know, these are the cool like little trends that are, um, I won't even say trends. Like these are the cool debates in DFS that, uh, especially DFS soccer that make it really fun because you know, you could probably get somebody that disagrees with me and can make up a great point to it too. And you know, the, the finale of it all might just be that we agree to disagree, but um, I hope that once again, I hope it helps. I hope that at least, you know, gives you something to chew on for Friday slate um, where we do have like the players and the theorems that are going to bring this debate back up. Um, so again, good luck Friday. I appreciate y'all watching and uh, let's crush the next like, weeks of soccer because it's going to get uh it's going to get crazy talk to you later guys have a good one bye